I think what we have uh, should be sufficient to have a very sort of introductory account of um, genocide. We understand the etymology of genocide. We understand that Raphael Lamp Lampkin um, discovered the, the idea of genocide and coined the phrase genocide. We understand how genocide, this, this notion of genocide, has now been become codified within law. Um, we know that um, the idea of genocide is a coupling of both the intent, the dolus specialis intent, the specific intent, coupled with the act, actions A through E, in Article 2 of the UNGC. So we have a pretty, um, we have a pretty solid uh, understanding of genocide. Okay, now, with respect to this idea, it's also important to, to recognize the following. Um, in discussing in discussing genocide, um, there are within the same within the same um, uh, UNGC within the same document, right? Within the same document, um, Article Three of the same document says um, what the acts uh, the acts specifically of genocide, how it is that we come to uh, punish the crime of genocide, right? So we're going to talk about um, that just briefly, and I'm not going to go through the document. This is not sort of uh, an, uh, an analysis of the UNGC by any sense, um, but what it is, it's an attempt to give you an idea of what genocide is, what the acts co that constitute genocide are, and also what do we mean when we're talking about sort of punishment with regard to uh, genocide. Okay, so article, the subsequent article, a Article 3 of the UNGC, oops, Article 3 of the UNGC, um, it defines the following acts as punishable, right? So, defines the following acts as punishable. Alright, and we're going to go through this list. A. Genocide. The act of genocide is punishable. We know what we mean by genocide now, right? There's a very technical understanding of genocide. The dolus specialis plus acts A through E constitutes an act of genocide. Okay, so that's punishable under Article 3 of the same document. Uh, number two, conspiracy to commit Conspiracy to commit genocide is punishable. Number three, direct and public incitement to commit genocide is punishable. D, number four, the attempt to commit Genocide is punishable, and number th uh, number five E is the complicity in genocide is punishable. Okay, so um, the same the same document, um, Article Two says that well we have one two three four five acts that are punishable. The act of genocide overtly committing the act of genocide is punishable. Um, conspiracy to commit geno genocide is, is punishable. Um, C, direct and public incitement um, to commit genocide is punishable. You know, trying to rally a, a group of uh, perpetrators, potential perpetrators to commit an act of genocide is punishable. Um, an attempt to commit uh, an act of genocide that might be thwarted by third party intervention is punishable. Uh, and complicity in the act of genocide is punishable, basically meaning being a bystander, being uh, um, uh, being a bystander, knowing, however, that the act is going on, uh, or allowing it, the act to go on without necessarily involving or implicating oneself, is also punishable. So, um, with respect to uh, the article, what we'll see is that uh, Article Three of the Convention on the Prevention and Punishment of Genocide defines the following acts as punishable. A. Genocide. 
B. Conspiracy to commit genocide. C. Direct and public incitement to commit genocide. D. Attempt to commit genocide. And E. Complicity in genocide. Okay, so what we've learned um, from this introduction so far is that we have an understanding of what uh, forms genocide, genocide might take with regard to the act, right, with respect to the, the various acts. But we also have an understanding now of how genocide uh, might be punished. Not only the act of genocide, but complicity or uh, attempting or allowing uh, participating in any manner um, in the act of genocide is punishable, right, under uh, international law. Okay. All right, now let's see what um, Raphael Lemkin has to say about the definition of genocide. He defines genocide in his book, and the name of his book is Axis Rule in Occupied Europe. Right? Axis Rule in Occupied Europe is sort of the truncated title. Um, so Axis Rule in Occupied Europe, uh, Raphael Lemkin um, coins the term genocide gives credence to the term genocide, defines the term genocide, gives examples of uh, instances of genocide, and I'm going to uh, read what Raphael Lemkin uh, has defined when he says genocide. Uh, Lemkin says in Axis Rule in Occupied Europe the following, quote, by genocide we mean the destruction of a nation or an ethnic group. Generally speaking, genocide does not necessarily mean the immediate destruction of a nation, except when accompanied by mass killings of all members of a nation. It is intended rather to signify a coordinated plan of different actions aiming at the destruction of essential foundations of the life of national groups, with the aim of annihilating the groups themselves. So, what we've seen, um, and there's a lot to flesh out in that, and in subsequent uh, video lectures, I'm not going to do it in this series of videos, in the next series, or maybe a few series from now, on foundations of genocide, we'll look at some of the key concepts that Lemkin introduces uh, in that definition. There's a lot. It's very, very rich. What does he mean by uh, foundations of life, right? Uh, and we'll talk about sort of the idea of foundations of life. Um, what does he mean by... Um, uh, immediate destruction, right? What does he mean by immediate destruction? You know, it, temporarily, uh, temporarily what, what does he mean? What can we infer? What can we deduce? What can we reason um, uh, immediate destruction might mean? Uh, annihilating the groups, right? How do we um, come to understand this, this process of annihilation? So there's lots um, that, can be, that can be discussed. But also I think one of the main things, uh, in addition to um, the foundations of life is the idea of a coordinated plan. He says uh, it is intended rather to signify a coordinated plan. And that's a very important um, distinction. I'll talk about that specific piece about this coordinated plan, at least an introductory account of this idea of coordination briefly in a few minutes. Um, and as the series goes on, we'll flesh out more of what the potential meaning of um, Raphael Lemkin's uh, definition of genocide, uh, what meaning it has, especially for social scientists, right? Especially for uh, social scientists. Okay.